Bear Down Bears fans, another week of Chicago Bears football heading our way. Bears taking on the Lions, and we got to start the week off right. That's why we got Lance Briggs in the building, ladies and gentlemen. He knows a little something about uh, hitting former Lions that were pretty good. Hey, Me- Megatron, never talked to you about that hit, brother. He ever he ever talked to you about that hit? That that was that was a hard hit, man. I, I mean, it's nothing but respect. It was a legit hit. That was, oh, it was good. It was a good hit. I just, I didn't know if he was like, hey, man, don't hit me like that no more. Yeah, I didn't need no. to. <laughs> no, no, He's a football player and he understands, uh, he understands the game, you know. Um, and I think he, and he had, that certainly has respect for the game, you know. So oh, yeah. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't a guy that was going to cry about getting hit hard, you know. Um, he was going to uh, reload and, uh, and, 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 <laughs> and catch a, catch a deep one on you the next play. Oh, yeah. Did he? Uh, did did he? Did, did was it? Did you feel that one a little bit when you hit him? Was it like, dang, he a little bigger than I thought he was? I ain't gonna. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, nah, it, it, absolutely it, it, not. Just what brushed him off. Just, what, come, what on. Do you mean? come on, Pat. Come on, hey, Pat. Hey, hey. <laughs> you know he went back to the huddle and was like, "Hey, Matt, don't throw it there no more, brother. What you doing? What's going on with that one? Hey, man, what we gotta it? talk about our bears don't though, come. man. They they in the hunt, Lance. We in the hunt, baby. All right, wait, 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 wait. So <laughs> let me get this right. So. <laughs> What 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 the 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 the, the minimum of yeah. what everyone has been asking of oh, this yeah. team yeah. is if we could just be in the hunt. <laughs> All right, that's a that's a successful season. Well, <laughs> Bear fans, we are found success. Hey, if we're in the hey. hunt. Hey, Liz, I said, man, we was talking about it before this. I said that's like a genie, right? You know, and if you'd be like. Uh, I want all the riches of the world. And the genie be like, okay. And it give you like water and be like, this is what the world has in riches. This is the word, mm-hmm. this is what it has. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you, we, we might need to be a little bit more specific in what we ask for next year from this Chicago Bears team. But we are in the hunt. Got a divisional game. Got to talk about that. Looking at uh, some of our division opponents and how they built their teams out. I mean, last night versus with the Packers game, of course, the Lions coming up. Got to look at some of these different teams. And then, uh, I always like getting a player's opinion on uh, the college football uh, competition committee and their decision making sure. on uh, putting people in the playoffs versus not. All yeah. that more in today's episode, man. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five star review. Y'all know what to do. First things first, Lance. How you feeling, brother? How was the bye week for you? Uh it's uh, it's been good. It's a um, lot less busy. Busy. Yeah. A um, little more chill. A little more rest. Uh, so it's. It's been nice. Did you nice watch more? The, did you watch more of the teams around the league this week, or uh, did you take a full on break from football? I watched a lot of college football. I watched a lot of NFL football. Um, it was it was nice to just sit back and 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 uh, just be a be a, a fan, you know, yeah. fan and and you know talk my stuff, you know, during the games to the people that are around me and yeah. You know, hear their opinions, give my opinions, share our opinions, mix these opinions, and 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 uh, and debate debate our opinion opinions. Uh, a lot a lot was going on. Who's the uh, who's the team that you key in on when you don't got to watch Bears? Who's the who's the defense right now that you watching that you like? Hey, they got some hitters over there, boys. I, I I'm you know what I watch football. I, I like to look I love at situations. That. I like to look at situations, and this is. You know, this is like you're watching, like I'm watching Red Zone, and it's popping from, from game to game. Yeah. And and I like to see the situations, and I see like to see how they handle those situations. You know, there's been a, I watched a lot of uh, of uh, uh, goal line, you know, pick plays, and it yeah. was it was crazy. It was one, they ran it two times in a row. They got penalized on a on a on a pick play, came back into another one, and with and they have the ball in the left hash, defensively. I mean, all right, so they ran it the first time and didn't get it because of a penalty. Yeah. You got to be ready for it the second time. Everything they said said that it was going to be a, a a rollout, like a quick rollout to the defensive left. Yeah. You know, and they're going to find somebody to pick. And, of course, the the, the linebacker is in uh, – he doesn't cheat over, gets picked a little bit. I mean, everybody – he got picked a little bit, just enough to allow the, uh, the receiver or the fullback or whoever it was catch the ball and score. Got to play heads up football. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I mean, we talked about that before, right? Like there's a lot of, it seems like there are a lot of times where the the things that were basic fundamentals for y'all don't come through uh, as as much now in the modern NFL. So 
I don't know, man. I, I watched a lot of football on uh, on Sunday myself, and I'm still at, a, at the same place where I was at. I can see why the Bears are in the hunt. There's a lot of bad football out there. There's a lot of good football as well now. The, the good teams are starting to separate themselves. But there's Tom, a lot Brady, of Tom Brady just recently talked about uh, the, the mediocrity in the league now and yeah. how the talent, you know, and, and, and coaching has really taken a step back, you know, and at, at this time of the year, majority of the team should be at their sharpest. Yeah. We shouldn't see uh, um, um, undisciplined games at the level that we're seeing it all around the league. Yeah. So that does lead me to believe a lot of things that he's saying is true. You know, coaching is taking a hit. You know, our our league is taking a hit, you know, yeah. in a lot of ways when, from being able to hit, you know, how they officiate uh, 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 pass interference. How they officiate a lot of things, you know, how it's all the, the, the new rules, the ruling system, the way it's, the way it's, uh, it's dealt out. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting it's, that in that this far into the league, into the, into the season, there's a lot, so much discipline, undisciplined play. Yeah. And to me, I think, I, I think there is a part of it that is on the NFL as well, though. Cause I mean, going into every single game, you never know what you're getting from these referee crews or what yeah. their, what their focal point is. Like, like the, the, the final play last night where to me, clear PI. On both shots downfield, but you call a PI on those earlier in the game. It's like so okay, like if if the refs give you consistency, if the league yeah, gives you call consistency, it, call, make your calls right down the line. Keep yeah. your calls right down the line. Don't don't call this one this time and then the same play, similar play, you call it this way. You're like, yeah, let's keep them this way, baby. I think I think that make it that it makes it very hard. Now it's not like it's something new, right? Y'all dealt with referees like that and when you played as well. But like I feel like it makes it that much harder to try and go out there and say, okay, we know he's gonna call this. We can't make this mistake. And then you don't make that mistake. And then they call it that time. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, dog, you didn't do that two plays ago. What happened? Mm. Well, I wouldn't play it that way. I wouldn't coach it that way either. I would just say, listen, we have to have a uh, a, a short memory, you know, because the way that the game is officiated now, the way that the rules have changed now, we're going to play this game at 100 miles an hour. So the, the chances of us getting a penalty or something happening, whatever it is, we have to reload, come back the next play, forget about that last play, and come out and ready to make another play. Hey, and, and I'll tell you what. That's what this Bears team is going to have to do because surprisingly enough, right, five games left. I think five of these are very, very winnable games depending on which Bears team you get on the field that day, which style of play calling we're going to choose for that day. But we got a Lions team coming up here with five games left. You can only focus on the team you have now. How do you get the job done versus the Detroit Lions? And the bigger question is, right, the defense already knows what you, you what you're going to do cuz you just did it 2 weeks ago, 3 weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like the Bears caught them a little bit off guard early. They adjusted and Justin Fields and and the offense was able to adjust back. Can Luke Getze do that once again to put you in a position where you're not so predictable versus this Detroit Lions defense? Well, you're you're going to um you have plenty of tape. I can tell you that much. You got plenty of tape. You know, it's fresh. Yeah. You know, you got it's two weeks fresh. So uh, um, you have a starting point. You have a starting point. You have things that were very effective against the uh, uh, Lions. You have things that weren't as effective, especially on that offensive side of the ball where Luke Getz can look at the calls that it was made and say, shoot, you know, um, I, I think if, even in your head when the when you're in the game, you know, and calling these plays, Sometimes it's like, oh, oh ooh, we should call another play. We should have called a different play. This would have been a yeah. better fit for this, you know. So I'm sure those are the notes that he should have, you know, from that game. Like, man, I was thinking about running this play right here and start adding that stuff into uh, 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 this week's game plan, you know. And and the good thing about it is all the things, all the ideas that he had of, of, of probably why well, you want to hope that this was the way, I, you know, yeah. of, of making those adjustments that were never made. Um, the Detroit Lions didn't see it. So if you want to make adjustments that you wanted to make the, the first game, you can make it for the second game because they, you didn't, they didn't see it. Right. 
How how hard is the second game in a divisional game, right? You see these guys a ton anyway, but right, you're gonna see the Lions a second time this close. How difficult is it that second time to go out there and get a win when at this point, right, you guys kind of both know what each other does on the field? Uh, it depends on your mental state. It depends on the, the state of the team, you know. Um, if you have a, a a dangerous kick returner, punt returner, you know, you sense. know that get them get them in the get them into the third and long and making them punt. You know, yeah. they're going to try to di- directional punt this ball, you know, and we're going to get f- good field position either way. You know, we get a couple of good runs, we're already in field goal position. Uh, you know, so, it, it, you know, we, we know uh, we know defensively uh, they know what coverages we're going to run. They know what, what's going to work, but they know what's not going to work. Yeah. You know, they know what the strength of our team is. We know what the strength of theirs is. You know, it's, it, you know, the, the, there's not, there's not a lot of change, uh, especially on a on a two week two week uh, turnover. Yeah. You know, there's not a ton of change now. There are some, you know, and in, in the league, the league is unique because when you talk game plans, people will game plan. You can game plan around one player. You know, yeah. what I mean, there there's one chink in your chain, and that's who we're going to take advantage of. You know, and and everything else really is setting things up so that we can continue to t- to to chip away at the guy we think is your weak link. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, listen, I think that the Bears did an excellent job, and we heard Cole Komet today talking about, you know, Darnell Wright and how, the job that he's done over the last few weeks. I thought he did literally an excellent job on Aiden Hutchison, especially seeing as how he's got one arm out there pretty much, and he's been playing hurt for most of this season. Uh, when you look at offensively, the offensive line going into this game, do you go into this kind of with that same mindset of we got to stop Aiden Hutchison, we slow him down, everything else is is a little bit easier? Because, I mean, to the, their pressures are really coming from mostly blitz if Aiden's not getting home. Listen, can we stop telling everybody that Darnell Wright only has one arm? Okay. I just, I heard, I keep hearing this. He has one arm. Listen, that big man's got two big old, big old <laughs> jumbo size arms. Okay. He got two big jumbo size arms. Yeah. He hurt one of them. He yeah. hurt one of them. It wasn't functioning at 100%. Uh, yeah. It was functioning at a very low percent. Yeah, I, I understand that. You're out on the field, play football. Yeah. All right. He went out there and he did his thing. Um, but I, I just, you know, it it, it just it, 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 it sends me the wrong way. You know, that's the one that hurts. Listen, listen, the guy was out there. He was beating Aiden Hudson. He had one arm, he only had one toe. You know what I mean? And and and, and he was ninety eight percent blind. Right? <laughs> he was Ray Charles out there on the left side. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. Uh, I I love that. That's the one that sent you over. That Cole Komet said he basically had one arm. Is that that's taking it a little too far in your opinion? You say I, I just I've, I've been hearing it a lot. You yeah. know, what I mean? I've been hearing it a lot, so I can yeah. see that it's it's one of the 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 trending topics when it comes oh, yeah. to bringing him up. Uh, you know, and 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 outside of just saying, you know what. He did a good job. Yeah. He did a good job. That's what he did. You know, in my opinion, you know, um, and, and whether you have, have uh, two arms, one arm, or you have three legal arms that you can use with football. Hey, he did a good job. Yeah. Right? Hey, you got to relax. That's crazy. <laughs> <You need to stop. laughs> That's crazy. Three arms. I said Come three on, arms, man. not three legs. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I, I don't know. That's still, that's still, a, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> what's the uh what's the what's the biggest thing that you look for for this Bears team to uh to close out this game on the defensive end that you didn't see in that uh in that first matchup, right? Up two scores, four minutes to go, should have been set in your mind. Defense loses this game. I agree with you 100 percent on that. What do you need to see defensively to get that extra four minutes, that 60 minutes of football mm-hmm. that you were calling for? Well, the first thing is, you know, when 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 your number's called, make the play. Just make the play. And I don't mean make the play like you, if you tackle, uh, allow the, the runner to, to, to fall forward for three, four more yards. You know, when you fit first contact, it's, it goes from a six-yard gain to an 11-yard gain. You know, it's, it's got to be a fight. It's got to yeah. be a fight once you get, get a hold of them. You know, get them down. You know what the down and distances are, all right? Make sure that he goes down before the first down marker. Period. Or, or just make sure he don't get away from you, Tremaine. I'm sorry, I said, I said, I, I attached an to it. That's my bad. I wasn't going. 
That's what I, I knew. It was I wasn't name dropping, but you that's know what, what I, mean? I knew. The game you know, was got, not going to go our way. <laughs> right. You know, and the other thing too, be disciplined. You know, yeah. the, the the call when the call is made, know where you're supposed to be. Align, yeah. communicate, communicate before the ball. A lot of times, communication will uh, will will clear up any confusion that you may or may not have prior to the snap. Uh, so you know, in in those especially especially in those critical situations. We need you to be able to defend. If we're up two scores, we're up one score, we're up three score, uh, uh, up by three points or less, we need to be able to play good defense, not just for 56 minutes, but for 60. Do you have any, because I don't even think we talked about this after the game because we were so disgusted by the fact that you got beat in four minutes. What would you say if Coach Flus or let, let's say Coach Smith, right, had a system that basically takes you out of the game because of a platoon swap that he likes to run. Because on that last drive, Montez Sweat doesn't start the drive off on the field. They're running a uh, uh, hurry-up offense. He's not able to get in there until halfway through the drive. Tremaine Edmonds never gets on the field during that drive. And when uh, your former teammate, Jason McKee, asked him about it, he kind of gave the football answer, right? I'm not going to throw coach under the bus, but, you know, we got to be better. We got to play better. We got to make sure we get those stops. But J-Mac was like, I'm sitting here looking at Sweat and Tremaine standing next to me. These are now your two highest paid players on the defensive end. If your coach pulls you out in those moments, do you, do you say something in that moment or do you just, this is coach's system? Well, you know, if, you know, any for for any decent decent uh, coach, you know, listen, you you answer questions however you want to, yeah. you know. But the the truth of the matter is, is you want your best players in in the in the critical to win the game. Yeah. If, it, if it's if it's to win the game, and you can go, then we need our best out there. Yeah. You know, mistakes a mistake. We made a mistake. You know, and it cost us. Yeah. You know, it, and, and to me, it, it cost us. But, you know, and, and at the same time, we had players that were in the game. Um, so, so you know, that that aren't – they're they're, they're competent. They, like, they, they know what they're supposed to do. Yeah. You know, so it's no excuse for the players that are in there to not make the plays that they're supposed to make. Right. All right? Terrain Edmonds was on – might have been on the sideline, but the series before, he was out there. Right. You know, he missed the tackle. So, you right. know, you, you – you plug him out and plug somebody else in, and it, it, the, the excuse isn't because Tremaine's on the sideline that they didn't execute the way it was supposed to. Whoever's out there needs to execute. However, with with that being said, when you, when you time to win the game, yeah. you want your best eleven out there. Period. Yeah, and I just I feel like Flus has this like he he said it a couple of times. He said it with DJ Moore early in the Packers game. He said it with uh, uh, Sweat and Tremaine basically that. You know, we allow guys to swap themselves in and out. But I am I just, I can't believe that two guys who have been 70 plus percent on the field guys at their previous locations in a game where the offense is on the field 20 minutes mm -hmm. or the defense is on the field 20 minutes when, you know what, mm -hmm. a little winded today. I got to take a breather. I know we got to get this stop, but let me go get some Gatorade on the sideline real quick. Like, I just don't believe that. I, I feel, and, and I don't know if, if this is kind of what you were saying, but it did feel like that was a Tremaine, you missed that tackle, come sit down next to me type of moment with Tremaine Edmonds. That could have been, that certainly could have been that. Yeah. That certainly could have been that. You know, the it's hard, it's hard sometimes to say, you know, because number one, we're not in that huddle. We're not, we're not on 100%. the sidelines. 100%. And the other thing too, you know, you, you see this move. That the, uh, the 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 league has moved to where, you know, they spell guys. Guys get, uh, um, you know, in, in, and for D linemen, I understand you got to rotate them to keep them fresh. Right. Linebackers, you shouldn't come off the field. We don't. Yeah. We don't come off the field. You know. So, so when when I think about that stuff, like you know, and and when I when I was playing, we you still had bell cow running backs. Guys didn't didn't yeah. they didn't tap out. You know, the coaches would send somebody to give them a spell after big runs or or uh, during, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 play drives. They'd come out and then they'd put them right back in. But it was like, I like I, I don't want to come out. I, I want to be on the field. Like, I'm, yeah. I am. A, we are better when I'm on the field. 
type of attitude. And now it, it seems like guys are okay with coming out like, hey, hey, let me get a let me get a couple plays. Hey, let me yeah. let me get a couple plays. You know, I never wanted to be off the field. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, you don't want to give somebody too much opportunity to look good out there behind you, dog. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, and, but, it's, it's, and it's I'm missing an opportunity. Yeah. I'm missing an opportunity out there. And I don't want to miss one opportunity. I don't want to miss any moments. I just, I, I felt like that was a, one, it was weird, right? Like, you look on the field and there's no, I, I, I'm sitting there looking through the tape, but I'm like, how's Tremaine Edmonds not on the field? How's Monte? We just traded for Montez Sweat. Was he tired from the plane ride? Like, we, he just got here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so it was, it was one of those things where, again, I look at my coaching staff and I say, what's your explanation for this? What is, what is your reasoning for this? And even right, I think even in that moment, I get I get what you say when and, and even what Flu says, where you want to platoon swap guys in and out to keep D linemen fresh. But in that moment, why are you swapping guys out? Why do you, why do you have a unit on the field that doesn't have your best players on the field? To me, that feels like my head coach is caught up in the moment of everything that's happening and something slipped past his view. And then he turns around, he's like, Sweat, what you doing back there, dog? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's odd. It's odd. And, and the, the, the oddest thing about it is not that they had a break. It's yeah. how long the break lasted. You know, it was, yeah. it was, it was long. I mean, I don't know how many plays that drive was. I know it was 75 yards. Yeah. So at some point, during that 75 yard drive for a touchdown, your your best guy should have been out there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that that's the bottom line for me with it. And I think that's one of the things that I am going to be looking for in this game. Hopefully, you know, we get out to a big lead and we hold on to it yet again. But how are we managing the roster? Right? Like I I I think there have been slight moments and and flus listen. To his credit, the defense is playing well without what is supposed to be a linchpin piece. I think he's done a good job the last three weeks with this defense, and you can start to see the progression really happening here. But there are those moments where it's just like, how'd you miss that? How'd you not see that? How do you? And so mm. against this against this opponent, and let me ask you this, right? Even with, and it's not not to say you expect him to get fired or don't, but even with going up against any opponent, but versus the Lions, versus the Packers, versus the Vikings, how much more do the McCaskies look at that and say, listen, those games are those games. Win as many of them as you can. You need to win these games. You can't blow these games. I mean, look, the 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 McCaskies, they, they, can, they can say whatever they want. They own the team. You know, <laughs> however they're feeling on a, on a Monday – or a Sunday night, you know, yeah. I can put a call in and 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 say, you know, if I'm the owner, I can put a call in right after the game. I can talk to somebody and send them, send them right down to the coach right now. Yeah, you know, and and say, hey, we want to, we're doing an emergency meeting, evaluation meeting on Monday, yeah. you know, and and Kevin Warren and and uh, Brian Pohl is going to sit in with uh, with our coach to evaluate the decision making that was made. Yeah, but um, but you know, it, it, it's it's also a, a there's a position of you know, this is we selected this guy. You know, and good, bad, or indifferent. You know, um, um, we we support. You know, we support him even when he makes mistakes. Yeah. You know, because all of these coaches, there ain't one coach in the NFL that doesn't make mistakes. No. You know, there's not one. There ain't one. All right. You know, the thing about it is, how do you respond to those mistakes? Okay, whether it be a call, whether it be a, a bad challenge. Yeah. You know, a a, 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 a poor preparation. You know, or or not not paying not not coaching the details. You know what I mean? So you're leaving stuff on the table so, for these guys. So, you know, it's I, I just there's a lot there. Yeah, I mean, and and even to the details, right? It, it's what you what you said before, right? Like, listen, this we're still. I mean, that last game, how many penalties did we have on defensive PI? You know what I mean? And I get some of them. I'm like, all right, I don't know about that one, ref. Yeah. I think, think y'all just, uh, it was laundry day and y'all wanted to show that the flags were freshly yellow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but there we're still seeing, and I get it with young players, but we're still seeing a ton of the same mistakes that we were seeing in week one, that we've been seeing in week two, week three. We're in week 13. Mm -hmm. And I'm not seeing those mistakes get coached out. And I'm going to be real with you, right? Like, completely different from last year's team. Last year's team seemed to be a very disciplined team with a lack of talent. 
This year, I feel like you have a wealth of talent. But because you have that talent, maybe you're not speaking up as much, or maybe guys aren't paying attention as much. Um, that's 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 good stuff right there, Pat. That's, I, I'm sorry. That's, every know, now I, and then, every now and then, I, I drop a little something, Lance. That's a gem right there. I tell you what, you know, um, um, the the focus you can tell the focus last year was on what was on on that discipline because there was such a dramatic drop from the year before in yep. penalties. You know, and then you know you that reason and hey, you bring in more talent. You know, the and with the talent, you, there's, a, there's a drop off in that that discipline for penalties. You know, and and there's because there's a higher talent level, higher talent level. Sometimes the you know coaches allow you to get away with a little bit of this, yeah, a little bit of that. You know, and all that stuff adds up because the little things lead to the big things. So you know, um, um, by rule or by principle, you coach the little things. You don't let everybody get away with a little bit of this. Or a little bit of that. You yeah. don't allow that stuff to creep in and you stay sharp. Sharp. And that's iron. been, I mean, we've been talking about that. I mean, what week, what was it? Week three? We were talking yeah. about Claypool disrespected in the hits principle. I mean, well, really, week one. Week really, one. Really, it was week one. Really, it was season. last year. Yeah, really, it was last year, right? But like, mm-hmm. but we've been talking about this the entire time and, and their solution to it was get rid of the guy. Okay, you got rid of him. He's out the building. Now everything should be solved. We're seeing the same problems pop up. I'm seeing a lack of the H in the hits principle at certain times, or I'm seeing a lack of the I, the intensity. We finally got the takeaways. I love the takeaways, but and I think that that's on both sides, right? Like, to me, the I goes away in that Detroit game when you say, all right, boys, we've done enough. Let's pack it in. Well, you can't you can't isolate one incident and say that they're not practicing the hits principle. You know, what wasn't what wasn't evident in week one yeah. was that whole it's hits principle. We are an effort team. Yeah. Um, that was a complete letdown. Uh, but you started to see a change, yeah. you know, as you know, then look, there's a lot going on, you know, the DC and, you know, it's a lot of, hey, hey. of confusion. I don't it's know. It's crazy up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, don't, I don't ask, don't tell what's going on, but um, you saw a gradual change. And what I have seen is they have become, a, a a effort team, you yeah. know, and, and I don't think effort is the issue or the problem. You know, um, there was there's a lapse in discipline in the last four minutes, um, and whether that be in 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 your tackling, in uh, in in coverage, in uh, in in securing the ball, you know. Um, um, but but I do believe that this is a team that is uh, has been prepared in a much better fashion leading after probably week three moving on since uh Iberflus took over. Yeah. You know, now whether that was whether that 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 preparation or that game plan was effective or not, it is what it is. You know, you 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 try for something, they they try for something too, and their their game plan may be better than yours. Right. right? But these team has found a way to get into the uh uh the the cut. What do we call it? The cut? In the they're, hut, baby. They're in the in hut. The hut, baby. We in the hunt, baby. Speaking of being in the hunt, appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page, man. We do uh, talk Bears Monday through Friday over here on the Chicago Bears podcast. With that being said, in the hunt right now, you've got five games left. Yep. Let's let's rewind 15 years for you here, Lance. You're back on the field. What are you telling your team about? The, was that? Should I not have put a year on that? Uh, I'm, not, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm okay. sorry, Lance. I'm sorry. You look it's good, okay. bro. You're doing good. You all right? Yeah, I mean, you I'm look like you still got snaps I left. I have to, you know, it's about, it's about, uh, uh, can, can I, can I, can I take my brain there again right now? You know, you can I mean? take, like, you can take. Like if you, what you said was, you said, hey, what would, you, if you're in the huddle, what are you, what would your, what, what are you thinking <laughs> that you want to get over to you, get, get over to your, convey to your teammates? Right. And like right now, like I can't take my brain back. I can't take it back 15 years. But what I can think about is what I'm thinking about right now. Yeah. Like, yeah guys, let's, let's, let's take say, guys, let's guys, break. If I were you, I would get me off of this field if you guys want to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right I got to I got to refresh again. Right. This is a lesson. Right. This is how we got the four and eight. Ask for things more specifically. Mm-mm. Let's take Mm-mm. 15 years ago. Lance's body. Oh, yeah. And my days. Lance's brain. OK. Run through a brick wall. <laughs> right, uh, there we go. OK. 
What are you yeah. telling your team to try and get them mentally prepared for what is, how Cole Komet said it right, every single game at this point is a playoff game for you as you go out on the field pretty much? Yeah. Uh, I would probably say, listen, if if you guys, I was in my group, my circular group, whatever, yeah. or well, everybody as a team, if you guys – if you guys like this coach, the coach that we have right now, and you that. like that and you like what we have going on, if you like your situation, yeah, you know, wh- how we go to go to work every day, you know, the way that we're treated, all those things. Yeah. If you want to have any chance for that to continue, then we need to win every one of these games. Okay. Because tomorrow's coach, we, we don't know who that is. Yeah. You know, we don't know who that is and we don't know how that will change uh, the direction of your career because all of you guys like it, it, a new coach means some of you, you, I mean, with the same coach, some of you guys aren't going to be here, but with a new coach, a lot of one year deals, there's yeah. a lot of guys that definitely will not be here Yeah, because you're not going to fit what he sees. Okay. And everybody is going to be different. Yeah. So, so, you know, with that being said, I'm trust me, I've been there. I've had this conversation uh, when it pertained to Lovey, yeah, you know, and and it was, you know, it was it was one of those deals too, you know. It was like, man, it it really sunk in. It hit, and I'm like, man, we really have to get our job. We have to do our job. Yeah, we have to get out there and we have to do our job. We got to win games so that we don't lose this coach. And it's crazy because we thought we, even even at ten and six, we knew that there was a heavy chance of him uh, um, um, gonna get fired regardless. We knew yeah. that. We knew we got we got ten that year, but we needed eleven. Yeah, it's what's that feeling like? Where you you feel like you've done everything you can, but it still isn't enough. Because I think that honestly could be a situation that these players have here, right? Even if you went out, you beat the Lions, you beat the Browns. Browns don't have a quarterback. People are going to look at it and say you were supposed to beat the Browns, even with their defense. You beat the Cardinals. Cardinals, I don't know what the Cardinals are anymore. I, I don't know if they like Kyler Murray or not. They they don't know if they like Kyler Murray or not. Yeah, you know I mean, um, the Falcons are a tough team. Maybe that's a win that you put on your hat. We know how the McCaskies feel about beating the Packers the final way of the season. You win out five games. It's going to be it's tough. Still, it still might not be enough. What no, is, but what is that but feeling not, like as a player? Not, it doesn't. It's, you got you to gotta go out and do your job. You yeah. know? Your job is to go out to lose. You certainly don't go out there and play to lose. Like that's not, right. you know, that's not, that's not the way you you shouldn't be built that way. None of us should be built that way. And I, I don't want to be on the field. I would never want to be on the field with a guy that's built that way. Yeah. You know, and you learn that you learn a lot of that stuff in um in in the summer and training camp, and then when it carries over into the real season, you get in those critical situations. You see a guy that that uh, I'm flying in here hitting the guy. And the guy next to me flies in and and uh, and and sidesteps, you know, and lets the guy gr- run right by him. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I I have a problem with that. Yeah, you know what I mean. I was like, listen, I'm I'm over here and I'm gonna break my neck. I'm out here, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna break my neck to make sure that you can make a play. And you're gonna sidestep a guy, you know, you know, you know, we, we'll have problems on the sideline. We're gonna have problems in the locker room. We're gonna have problems every day until yeah. either we get to somebody else in here or you figure this thing out. Yeah, because I'm not about here because because the reason the, the reason that we're going to lose a game is because you don't have enough uh, uh, enough balls to go out and do what you got to do. Yeah. All yeah, right. That, that that is. Listen, I, I hope that this Bears team does. I think that this Bears team does. But we got to see them close some of these games out. Even looking at last week. Man. Mm. It's not complicated. It's not complicated, Pat. Yeah, it's not. It, it's only complicated if you over if you if you like overthinking and you like uh, uh, um, the the making that making making discussion. Yeah, you know if it bleeds it leads type stuff. You know we got to talk about something. Let's let's get the thing going. Let's get the you know let's get the blood flowing on the, on yeah, the Chicago yeah, yeah. Bear fans. But it's simple. It really is. It really is. You know, at the end of the day, you don't you saying you don't need a Ray Lewis out there for you. That's that's what you're saying right there. You don't need a. Uh, you don't need to get the praise out there right before you go on the field to get you ready to go. A grown, <laughs> for a grown man? Yeah. A grown man? Listen, hey, I'm not going to lie to you, though. I'm not going to lie to you. Ray in the huddle, I, I just listen to Ray on the TV, and I'd be like, hey, bro, I need a football real quick. When he yeah. said, when he said, we got to be at the level of Eagles, because if an Eagle looked to his left, 
He know it got to be another eagle there. I said, hold on now, bear down, hold on, wait a minute. He don't even play for us. I need, I need a football real quick. <laughs> Yo, it can't be a seagull up there, Lance. He can't fly high enough. You got to be with the eagles, baby. That's true. <laughs> very, very true. Very right, true. But you didn't need it. You didn't need it. You was going now, out there. Grown <laughs> man, a grown man shouldn't need it. A grown man shouldn't need it. Now, my yeah. 8U, my 8U, I got, I'm, I'm going to get them pumped up. You know yeah. what I mean? I got to get them pumped up. I got to get their mental. got to make sure that they're mentally ready and, and locked in. Yeah. For, for for a grown man and you're a professional, you're at the highest level. You've got you you made it here. You need a motor. You need me to motivate you. Mm -mm. <coughs> that's always that's always my biggest issue with with how people talk about uh, a lot of the coaches, right? Because they look at certain guys and they say he's a motivator. He's gonna make guys do what they don't want to do. He's gonna. And I'm like. I don't know if I want a team of dudes. I got to make do what I want them to do, right? Like, that's that's a lot of the talk around Flus, too. He's like, these guys aren't motivated to play for them. I'm like, they made it to the NFL. They're getting paid millions of dollars. They should be motivated to play. Period. Because of that. Period. Period. Yeah, you, I mean, you know. I get it. Bad situations pop up. I don't think this is a... Like, we're not in a Carolina Panthers situation here, y'all. When, uh, when you strip away the talent, you know, the 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 physical... Um, um, prowess, everything that built, you know, outside of just one, this one skill, like to, if you made to the league, you were a competitor growing up. You were yep. a, you were, you were a competitor, like you, you love to compete. So when you get to the league, you know, you get, you, you get, you know, you obviously you're making a lot more money than you've ever made before and all that good stuff, but you get to, like, you get to go to work. Yeah. You know I mean, like you get to do this for work. And you get to compete for a job. I guess your career is to compete, and 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 you you stretch and and you go through calisthenics every day. You know what I mean. And and then you go through your warm ups, your your everyday drills, your seven yeah. on sevens, your inside drill, your team team period for a job. Come on, man. What's better than that? That's how I feel doing this, dog. I get to I get to wake up, go to work, and uh, talk to Lance Briggs on a Monday, brother. That's. Aww, that's Look at you. Look at the you. All made me, me feel awkward. Me up, I'm not going to lie. That, that one made me feel the all was a little much there, brother. I tried to get, you know what? It, it, now it's a job again. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> 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 no, I love it, man. I honestly, and, and I think that, I think it's weird because, right, let me ask you this. When you look at last week, we, we talk about the Bears in these, either they're the greatest team of all time or they're the worst team in football. There's nothing that people want to have the conversation on in the middle. But I think that last week, first divisional win that this Bears team has gotten under Matt Eberflus, a 12-10 to 10 win. You didn't score a touchdown. This was a grind it out, go out there and try and do everything you can type of game to come away with a win. Justin Fields drive you down the field. Do these type of games do more for you sometimes than the we blew them out by 40 because of you had to dig so deep to get the victory, to go out there and actually beat the team? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, look, I, again, I, 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 I want to fall back on, like, <laughs> it's not that complicated, you know? Um, I, the, 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 all the, yeah, the things that, the things that you want to see, right? yeah. you know, the things that you want to see is, and it's interesting because every, Every week there's something else that you want to see. Oh, these guys haven't won a game in, you know, in, in 21 games or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. They're on this streak. All right, we in that streak. Well, uh, we <laughs> we our, our defense isn't uh, making any stops. Okay, defense aren't making stops. Oh, well, uh, you know, our offense isn't producing. Our offense produces. Well, now they're not finishing. Okay, the offense finishes. Well, they're still giving the ball up. All right, and I don't like the I don't like all the uh, the bubble screens. Okay. Well, they won the game. No, hold on, yeah. hold on. You don't you don't like the bubble screens either. Don't you? <laughs> it's a. I, 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 I'm not, I don't. I don't disinclude myself from all these yeah, comments. Yeah, like I'm yeah, part yeah. of it. I'm part of the media yeah. too. I'm right. Part of the media too. You know. But you know, and, and, and it's and then when a, a lot of these questions get answered, it's it's still all right. But I don't like him. He's you know why is your grade so high for the coaching? You know why yeah. why would your grade be high for the coaching? I'm, well, well, number one. One or two of our uh, of the categories got an A. Yeah. How the heck can I fail coaching? And he got an either offense got an A, defense got an A, or special teams doesn't yeah. make any doggone sense. Come on, yeah, you know. So 
you know, I, 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 I don't do it. I don't do my grades based off of whether I like a coach or not. You know, my grading comes based off of what this coach is doing, how he's affecting this team. Is he preparing yeah. this team uh, the way that a coach needs to prepare this team? You know, well, whether they yeah. execute, whether they execute or they don't, you know, that's the player. But the coach is a coach doing his job. Does he, you know, it, it, and I'd also don't, I don't grade um, interviews. I can add that. I can add that. Great interviews. He would probably fail Interview every time. Great. He'd probably fail every time. He would. <laughs> I, I just, here's my thing, right? I don't care what you say in a press conference if you win, because I ain't going to lie to you, right? I love Lovey. Lovey is the coach of my childhood, right? And he wasn't exciting. Oh, um, bro, like hearing Lovey in the press conference would make you feel like we was going to lose every single game. But then y'all would go out there and win 10 because Lovey would just but throw you, because it would it would be right like, hey, Lovey, you know, you're going up against uh, the Minnesota Vikings this week. Um, they have one of the best front fours in football. Are you going to do something different than, you know, run the football right at them? Well, you know, we gonna, we're going to stick to what works for us. And, we're gonna, right. We're going to get and in our gap. And that's our game. And we're going to be in our gaps. And we're going to make our plays. No, and listen. Hey, and then y'all would win, and I'd be like, yeah. bro, all right. <laughs> go ask, go ask any New England fan over all of those Super Bowls, you know, with Bill Belichick answering, you know, answering those questions as vanilla as you can possibly get in the league. Like Levy, <laughs> Levy was actually Cincinnati. colorful. He was colorful compared compared to uh uh compared to Bill, New England yeah. coach, compared to Bill, you know. So yeah. it's to you know it, I, I, you know, and I know, I know what Chicago's you, you know, I know, I get it, you know, Mike Dicka and all that stuff, you know, and those type of guys. But I want, I, I prefer wins. I prefer building a championship. Yeah. And any kind of, of super, uh, uh, Ozzy Guillen type, you know, nobody's like them, you know, those unique hey, guys. But that, that's the thing, no, Lance. Those guys won us our championships. Now, Lovey did get us the one. But it doesn't. But it doesn't mean that that type of coach <laughs> hits you there. No, you know you because got a coach that's teaching football, and you can see that in the way that they play. That's that's the one thing that I will say too, because everybody always says the the funniest thing, and I think it's one of the privileges we get of you know being on this side of things, being in media, you being a player, is we get to go to training camp. And I keep saying this: they cussing these mugs out at practice. They're not sitting here like it's not Matt Eberflus just like. All right, guys, come on, let's get. It's like flu's like, let's get to the line. Why are we walking? What like they're screaming at them, yeah. screaming like in some for some reason. There's this generation of people that think if I scream at you and I'm willing to punch you in the face, that means I'm a good leader. Mm -hmm. That don't mean you're a good leader. That means that you got a good vocal range. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Go be a you singer talk. somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, like so. I I don't I don't subscribe to the I need Mike Ditka to scream in my guys' faces or threaten my guys' jobs to go out there and motivate them. I don't even think that would work with most of the league right now. And, and if we're being real, right, a lot of the coaches that were those guys were mm. slowly starting to see them leave the NFL because this new generation of players be like, who are you talking to? <laughs> um, listen, yeah, I wouldn't last very long. <laughs> oh, well, he he said, like, hey, like, like, I, but you know what? He said it's the old generation too. You're not gonna talk to me any kind I mean, of way. Yeah, I mean, you're not. You're not. Uh, but I, but I'm. I i do not just. Talk, I wouldn't talk to anybody just like that anyway. Like I'm yeah. gonna, I give, I give men, I give men their respect. Yeah. You know, to me, you either, you, you know, and if I'm coaching you, you either, you either did what's asked or you didn't. Yeah. You know, uh, um, the 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 excuse never comes before accountability. Okay. You have to be accountable first. And then we can deal with that if we want to go that route, because yeah. when it comes to the production based business, <clears throat> the excuse, I don't even want the excuse. Well, a lot of times I don't even want the excuse. You know, they got a first down because you didn't do. You, did, did you do what I asked? Did you do what you were taught? Did you do what you yeah. were coached? Yeah. All right. If, you, if the answer is no, I have I have I don't want to know it because they got a first down. I don't care what the answer with the, the excuse. Yeah. Is. You know, <clears throat> make the play. Yeah. We know that's what Lovey was looking for. You know what I mean? So I love it. Hey, what, what was uh, his, what was Mark looking for? Was Mark Mark in the back of the room with y'all with the laser pointers? Like Lance, what happened here? He, he was like, he was like, nah. Mark, 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 don't, don't. <laughs> nah, he wouldn't. Nah, he didn't. He didn't say a whole lot. He didn't say a whole lot. Not in the defensive. Not in the defensive room. He would, he would bring us. He would bring us all into the uh, the as a team and and show us uh, uh, CFL highlights. 
Yeah. <laughs> CFL, bro. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I don't know if nobody's ever talked about this. He was showing y'all CFL highlights to do what? Just to tell us how great these numbers of a guy he coached put up eleven thousand passing yards. Yeah, paint the football yeah. bounce. Listen, I'm <laughs> I'm as puzzled as you are right now. When I was I was wait, listening, to this, I'm like, listen, man. CFL, <laughs> like you know. Like this is the we we're this is the golden prize right here. You know Yo, I mean? like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Happen, <laughs> what, I had to ask all the time, like, hey, what do yards in the CFL mean in the NFL? And I was like, nothing, <laughs> nothing. I'm like, exactly. So why are we why well, we gotta sit through this? Wait a minute. Can't you bounce the football once and they can catch it and, and it still count as a completion or something like I, that to see I, I don't like, know. <laughs> like it's never played I, I never played there. Oh, he's talking about 11,000 yards. That's funny, bro. That was funny. Hey, listen, get, if you guys could play like this, you'd be pros in the CFL. Like, we in the NFL, dog. You know? Killing me. <laughs> Killing me now, right now. Now I got now I got a Star Wars figurine coming in that I'll I'll be right back, guys. Uh, let's keep this thing <laughs> moving along. Appreciate y'all for tuning in the show. <laughs> hey, the CFL highlights is funny, bro. I ain't never heard that one. That's great. Yeah. Let me well, ask I'm, you this, Lance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When you look at um, how the Lions, who we're playing now, have built their team up, the Bears could pot. Listen, we went five games right. Now we're talking about them being on the same trajectory. But they did it kind of the inverse that we did. We went linebacker first, and now we're starting to add in our D-linemen, drafting young D-linemen, different things like that. They went D-line, O-line first, and then they started adding their pieces based on you know what they had on the lines. Which do you prefer? Which would you rather see? Which would you have rather seen be done if you were the GM of this team? I'm giving you a raise again, Lance. GM Lance back in the building. How would mm. you have thought about it? Um, we need to talk about how much this raise is. You can't just tell me you give me a raise. And <sighs> I mean, I don't know how much is Ryan Pole. You, you can't just tell me you give me a raise and you want me to shuck and jive for you. All right, I ain't gonna just shuck and jive now. All right. Show me some numbers now. I need, I need, you know, I need telephone numbers now. Hey man, let's see, <laughs> let's see. What's uh, what's um, Ryan getting? Uh, now nah, we get, I'm just messing with you. I don't, know. I, don't know. I, I don't shoot. I don't know how much he made. They just be paying these months, bro. I be like, he in the building. I don't care. <laughs> hey, look, it's uh, it's, it's all. I really like the way that they're doing it right now. Um, yeah, and it's all based off of, you know, um, what is being provided in the draft. You know, uh, last last year there weren't a lot of of uh, interior D linemen. There weren't a lot, you know, yep. and I think it was, uh, in my opinion, it was a down year too for O linemen. You know, it was big for a lot of skill skill guys. Um, so you had to take your pick. You know, you had to take your pick, and you had to pick it early because there's going to be a lot of drop off, and it's going to have a drop off early because once you start yep. picking those guys, teams know, okay, shoot, there's only this guy or this guy that's on the board. If we're going to take, we got to get up there or we might need to trade up to get them now. Um, and uh, they tried to fill needs through uh, the free agency, you know, and I, I, I like them trying to fill needs through free agency, but yeah. not trying to uh, buy everybody up. You know, you buy a piece here, buy a piece there. Let's see what we're going to do. And, and then we go, we'll fill other pieces up in the draft. Do we have another off season coming up? All right. It's going to be interesting where, what, what picks the bears get in the off season. You know, it's going to be interesting to see if they'll be able to trade back to get more picks. But this is a draft coming up that yeah. has its heavy offensive linemen, its heavy defensive linemen. We've got some players now. Yeah, you know, I've, I I went through uh, I went through about shoot, I want to say seven, eight, three techniques. All right, I like I like five of them. Ooh, I like five of them. I like okay. to hear that. Are these are these uh, guys that may be under the radar? Or are these first round, second round guys? These are these are first second second round guys. I think okay. you know. I don't. I don't even. I don't even think they, that the, these three techniques get to the to the third round. I think. Mm. I think they're okay. too good. Okay. I think each one of these guys guys can use. You know, um, the third. I can tell you right now for anybody who's who's looking for the guys I'm looking for. All the guys I'm looking for are right around six two, six one. All right. There's a there's a there's a big boy. Uh, he's six four. It's too big, too big, too tall. You mm. know, and and not that he couldn't do the job. But these other guys are just better fits. You know, right. they're going to cause more havoc. They're they're quicker. They're going right. to be quicker than him. Right. Okay? But uh, but yeah, like I said, I I saw some talent there. I saw some guys that can really come in and uh, and be a force. You know, be a force for for us uh, moving forward. So I'm so you, I'm, mm -hmm. 
you think Ryan just built for the scenario that he was in, which is which is the smart thing to do, right? He just built it based yeah. on where the market was at right there. Yeah, you know, and, and you don't, you know, if you if you reached for anybody other than Jalen Carter uh, last year, you know, yeah. I mean, well, Kendrick Clancy, I think Kendrick Clancy's good. He's Kalijah. Good. Kalijah. Uh, Kalijah. Is it Kalijah? Hey. I'm sorry. Hey. He's very hey. good. But That's a dog. Why? That's a dog. <laughs> but if you get the, but if you, but at, at that point, you just like, I'm either going to, I'm either going to go defense. If you're going defense, you got to get Jalen. Right. All right. And if you say, I can't get Jalen, I have to get uh, Clancy. All right. Or I'm going offense. All right. We know this pick. This is, the, you know, this solid pick. We're going offense. Right. You know, next year or this upcoming year, depending on what happens, uh, that's probably going to, we might be in the same position. But in this position this year, you can get that top offensive lineman and that top defensive lineman. You can get yeah. them both. You can yeah. get them both. Hey, there, there's there's absolutely an opportunity here for him to clean up. That's going, you know, that that it to me, that's one of the main reasons why I think the quarterback position doesn't change. Because there's a real opportunity for you to solidify both of your lines. Yeah, maybe you miss out on another QB that becomes a CJ Stroud or something like that. But if I fix my center position, I fix maybe my left tackle and I get a three technique. Stop trying to go and get CJ Stroud. Stop trying to go and get Patrick Mahomes. All right. Those guys are who they are. You need to go. We need to go and have what we have. Let's make the best dog on Justin Fields. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's just make him the best dog on Justin Fields that we can make him. You yeah. know what I mean? Or he can help make this team. That's what, we, you know what I mean? Stop trying to go get somebody that we don't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey. It, it's it's going to be interesting to see kind of how this whole thing finishes out. I think the the next five weeks. Here's the thing. I the part that irritates me is I think people have just picked their sides. Either yeah, you yeah, hate yeah. Justin or you hate Justin, and it's like, well, he got five games left to to go out there and play. What if he's, you know, three hundred plus yards in the air and and seventy five rushing yards every game? And yet we still all hate him. Whether you hate him or you don't, whether you hate him or you don't. See, this is the. It, this isn't a this isn't a Mitchell Trubisky situation. Yeah. All right. Like before Mitchell was uh, was drafted, there was nothing that said he should be drafted or have all those trades traded away to move up to get him. There's nothing that I watched yeah. tape on him in his uh, in his career at North Carolina that said he should that that should have been done. All right. Um, and I rooted. I I certainly rooted for it. Yeah. It just it wasn't there. It wasn't there before. It wasn't there during. It wasn't. It still ain't there at Pittsburgh. Okay. <laughs> he did just get in too. He did just get yeah. in. Yeah. Immediately. You know, um, um, now, Justin. On the flip side, everything said that he is a guy that can do that in the biggest stage, um, consistently. And yes, he did have. Uh, uh, he was uh, 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 treated over there because he had the offensive Ohio State offensive line. Offensive oh yeah. Team. You know, with a lot of the best receivers and stuff like that. Yes, absolutely. There's going to be a transition to uh, even play in the NFL. But, but um, what he has shown me is that I do believe that there's a system that we can run that he can thrive in. Yeah. No, 100. percent Let's see. that. That is uh, that's that's a pie for another day, bro. I feel like I've said too much about Luke Getty already. Y'all already know my feelings on him. I don't care who we got at quarterback next year. Lance, you playing quarterback next year? Lou Getty can't be OC. <laughs> Man, listen, you, hey, gotta, hey. Hey, you keep trying to put me in this game. You're gonna have to pay me a lot of money. Hey, for that one play. I'm getting paid. I want guaranteed money. Now, hold on, though. Hold on. Though. We we give we give you we give you five million guaranteed, right? Right. We give you five million guaranteed, well, but we put you behind San Francisco's offensive line. Well, I want guaranteed on signing. Guaranteed on signing. <laughs> That's all I need. Guaranteed hey, on hey, He said, because I'm going to need at least the meal for the pulled hammy immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, depending on if I have to play one snap, I will make it through warm ups. Yeah. But you better have a backup warming up ready. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be quick. <laughs> Let's finish it off here, Les. Let me ask you this. Uh, pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You're a big college football guy. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, you and, and J-Mac and all of y'all watching college football has made me watch college football more this year than ever before. Um, and I, for the most part, kept up with it. Yeah. Should FSU have gotten in to the college football playoffs? Did the competition committee get it right? 
Yeah, I think um, I think um, if if Jordan Travis Jordan Travis is healthy, uh, FSU is there. Yeah, FSU is there uh, without him, and you know the the second and third uh, string quarterbacks. No, that, I, I believe they made the right decision, and the even better decision is moving to the twelve. 12 game playoff next year. Yeah. So there is no question mark there. You know, if we're arguing about the 12th or 13th team, I think, I think the country will be okay with it, you know, and, and, and we'll move on from there. Yeah. But, uh, but the, the answer is the 12 playoff team, 12, 12 playoff system that they're moving to next year. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I'm, I felt like if anything, if you were going to put FSU in, that means that you can't have an SEC team in there, right? Alabama doesn't make it. Alabama beat Georgia. They don't make it. That's the only way you put Florida State in. I think that scenario happens if you're going in there with your starting quarterback. But they are the competition committee. And I know they're wrong every year. Like, mm -hmm. for somebody, they're wrong every year, right? And there's a lot of times where I look at them, I say, that was a horrible decision. I have no idea what you guys are doing. But this yeah. year, we're talking about putting the best four teams that can compete together. Competition committee. It's, FSU it's, without yeah. their quarterback can't compete to me. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, uh, you know, the thing, the tough thing is, is um Georgia hasn't lost in two years. Uh they're they had the easiest strength the schedule of this top six this year. Yeah. You know, um FSU had one of the tougher um uh, strength of schedules, you know, and they cert they earned their right as a power five to be in that, in that four. And with Jordan Travis, they're in there. I, I think the SEC loses out if he's there because there's all of the uh, the, the non-losses. Uh, non yeah. you know, non-losses in the power five, you know, but but in this situation, the, I, I believe they got it right. And you look at the last game, like, I, I get it. I love... Brock Glenn put up 55 yards, bro. Yeah, they can't compete with him. Yeah, you know I mean, like, like he put up fifty five. And that's what they're, and that's what they're looking to see too. You know, yeah, they're I mean, looking to see are you, you know, are because those those players it's outside of uh, Jordan Travis, those players busted their tail. Yeah, they busted their tail. You know, and for a lot of them, they they won't get an opportunity, another opportunity to to compete for a national championship. And that's that, sad. That does suck. It does suck. Mm -hmm. And I and I tell you this right now, I I agree with you one hundred percent. The 12 team next year, we're not gonna have these debates anymore for the rest of our lives. Well, you know, there's there's gonna be you know Kennesaw State and <laughs> and and somebody else that's gonna you know gonna be like, come on, man, we want that 12th yeah. spot. We fought hey, man. that 12th spot. You well, you go, you're gonna be arguing for Northwestern at the. Ah, never mind, don't worry about it. Hey, man, appreciate y'all for tuning in and rocking with us. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Illinois is coming. Oh, maybe not. Uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in for another episode of Chicago Bears podcast. Pat the designer, Lance Briggs. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear down. Let's go get a dub versus Detroit, man. Peace.